so what what did we're what were we asking about? <laughs> Go ahead. I watched an episode of Paranormal Survivor. <laughs> did you? And it was somebody that we both personally knew and worked with. Yeah. And you were mentioned or well. I know of a story that was in that episode that you were involved in, where you and the woman went to a house, and she claims that she saw a seven-foot black negative entity in the woods with horns coming out of its head, and I wanted to hear your side of it. Alright. The, the main person in question mentions a friend they were with uh, by the name of Claire. Well, I'm Amy, and it's cool that they change the names for that kind of stuff. If there's anything sensitive, fine. That's normal. But it rang familiar when she started talking about going to an abandoned house so that nobody would be there and it wouldn't be an issue. And it was the same night as everybody else on the team at the time. They were going to a place that was suggested by somebody else and a few team members went. But I remember the leader of the team was like, don't do that, you don't know what you're getting into. And I remember the main guy who had asked if people wanted to go and we were touring the basement of Tenbrook Mansion before the Halloween event. And again, this was 2011. This was a while ago. And I remember him standing kind of over me, he was taller, and being like, hey, so do you want to go to the blah blah blah? We're gonna, and I'm like, um, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I think I gave him like a maybe and just wasn't really interested in being there on Halloween, just didn't want to. And I was friends with the main girl at the time. And I said, well, there's this house that I love, and I, fucking really? And I want to just go check it out, because I've always thought it's gorgeous. And I, my dad and I have gone and looked at it in the daylight, and like, looked through the windows. In the store, it's all fucking like run down, and it's not, cabin in the woods style. No, no, it's, it's off of River Road, just so you know. <laughs> It's just a regular house that's abandoned, and the, and so we park. I go down there. I'm the one driving, because I know where it is. I think I had my pickup truck if it was that long ago. Maybe she drove. I, I want to say we were in a car, so it might have been her. But we stop there, and they have a really long driveway that's completely hidden from the road and dark and not paved. You come up to it at an angle, so you come up at the front corner. We're walking past like a screened-in porch part that's in front of us. There's all shrubs and trees here, so the road is way over, and you wouldn't be able to find us. But it starts feeling icky just because it's dark as shit. And it, it was dark, and it was Halloween, so we already had that in our heads. And I remember that we both didn't feel quite right, and that's fine and all. And I know she said she saw something, and she said it had two eyes and it was dark. But I didn't see a thing. I can't validate that because I remember not seeing anything and telling her I didn't see the same thing. I kind of felt icky but you kind of feed off of that other person's fear in each other when you both have that feeling going on. So Plus at this I point, didn't see you were, anything. you were being told by someone that you respected that you were psychically Psychic, yeah. gifted, and yeah. she was too, Yep. and you were both under his tutelage. tutelage it's a great word whatever. to use. Yep, oh yeah, I was so, deep in, deep in. I'm sure you guys were feeding off of each other oh, that yeah. way. Oh yeah, psychologically, that was absolutely a different time in my brain for sure but the minute i heard that story i was like wait a minute i, I know this night I so what else do you want to know about that night i, I lived it do you want to know what happened after like on the car right home after we got back to my apartment so i think she must have driven because i think she dropped me off well wouldn't it make sense if you drove and then you're bringing her back to your apartment in her car? I don't remember. I honestly don't remember who drove. I don't know. She so weren't really the type of person to find people in. Like, I dropped you off. Yo, do you want to like, come up okay, and hang out? Yo, deuces. Yeah, I remember standing on the phone with the phone on speaker. I don't know I don't know if it was her phone or my phone, but we called the leader of the team and told him what we had just experienced. And he was upset. Like, he was mad at us. Like, I have to protect you psychically. I, I'm doing this while you guys are out running around doing all this other stuff. And now that I look back on it, what I think was happening was he was upset that every single one of his team members was out doing something paranormal and entertaining on their own for fun on Halloween, and he was not. And I think he got mad. I have and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But go on. He probably didn't want you two being alone together. 
What? Oh. Because of the conversations that might Oh, have yeah. Happened. Oh, yeah. And the words that might have said. And what the fuck would you guys doing anything have anything to do with protecting him and his kids? Because he has to use his psychic protection powers to protect everybody on the team. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. I know. I know. And we were all like, all right. I don't know how that works, why but maybe there's something to it. Like, why? So that was the phone conversation after it happened. Yeah. Standing out on the sidewalk with the phone on, on speaker with him. And then hearing afterward about what everybody had done at that other location. And I guess I do kind of recall something about it matching up. It's out of their it's own perspective. Putting I have it together no, after the fact. Yeah, it's, it's, too easy. it's a logical fallacy that I'm sure I could find if so I looked at So basically, the, team, the other was. team, while they were out, they had a bad night. Everybody had like a bad night, but I didn't have a bad night. I had a spooky night, and I was looking yeah. forward to going toward this house, and then she freaked out and said she saw something, and I'm not going to take that away from her because I, I don't live in her body or in her mind, so I don't know what she saw or didn't see or what she thinks she saw or didn't see, but yeah, and it was 2011, right. and it was right that fall that the team leader and this uh, the girl in the show were like, oh, we're psychic, and I was totally down. I was totally, I, I was like Joe Rogan into Aliens. I was fucking lost and needed a fucking shepherd to be found. But you know what? I used my fucking brain and talking to a lot of people. I trained Amy. He She'll did. She'll never bring he that did. up. But. He did. He was. I give credit where credit's due. I trained but Amy, but the people but I she learned. moved up in ranks faster because... <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? The same say, thing? Uh, our relationships <laughs> were different. <laughs> I don't need tact. Fuck tact. I lived tact. it. I got it. So that's Paranormal Survivor, and chick who was on it is somebody I used to somebody I used to know. And investigate with. And investigate with on a team. I'm the girl with the different name in the show. I'm the girl on the show in the story. Call it shooting shit with Rick and shit. <laughs> Rick and shit. Somebody I came in here for thirty seconds and stuck for thirty minutes.